everybody out there in YouTube world. Um, I wanted to come back at you with a short video. I was looking for some videos on my Craftsman uh, T1200 riding lawnmower to try to figure out what was going on with it not being able to start. And I found some other videos, but nothing on the T1200 specifically. So I wanted to make a quick video about that and to show you what I'm going to do to try to alleviate my problem uh, with it not starting. So uh, I checked the fuel line, I checked the fuel filter, I did all the, the diagnostics, and it really, uh, the only thing that's left is the carburetor. And I could pull it off and clean it, but I was able uh, to find an, a whole carburetor kit uh, that has the carburetor, the, the air filter, the fuel filter, the fuel line, uh, spark plugs, and even the, uh, the gaskets on Amazon for about 25 bucks. So I said, you know, this uh, carburetor's been on for quite a while, why not just change it out? And so what I want to do today is kind of just walk you through that process and let you see what I'm going to do to get this thing changed out and then we'll see if we can get it running at the end. All right, so we'll be right back. So just uh, hang on one second, we'll get going. All right, so now we're gonna get ahead, go ahead and start taking this thing apart and see what we got, all right? So first of all, uh, what we have is the cover plate for uh, the, the, the mower itself. And it only has a few screws. I've started taking some of them loose. It's like a 10 millimeter um, wrench that's gonna be needed to take these loose. So I kind of got them started, you know, taking them loose. And, and let's just take these, uh, finish taking them off. And so we can get this cover removed. Okay. All right, we have one here. And don't do that, don't drop the screws like I just did, but we'll be able to get it. Hopefully. All right, this one here. Let's see if we can't get it. Kind of started getting them loose already, so we have a wouldn't take up so much time on the video taking screws loose. You guys know how to take screws loose. Here you have two bolts that screw in in the front side of it that holds the, the cover together. Uh, they're loose as well. I just uh, hand tighten them so that we could really get through this pretty quickly. So now, really all we have to do is remove the cover and set that aside. Pause. Okay, what we have here, we have the fuel line going to the carburetor. And earlier, as I said, I checked the fuel filter and I checked the fuel line to make sure there was no blockages there. And I even drained all the fuel from the, the tank as well to make sure there's no trash. So I'm assuming that trash got into the carburetor here and that's what's causing these issues. So first we're gonna just take off these two screws here off of the carburetor and start getting this puppy removed. So we'll go through that. And it really, it's really simple. It's only a couple of screws. They're right here. So with the cover removed, now we can just remove um, this component here that has uh, that, that stays attached to the, the so that the, uh, the airflow uh, is effective for uh, the carburetor itself. And then we have the two screws here that tie the carburetor uh, connected into uh, the motor itself. So with this carburetor, it has uh, only a few connections here. As you can see, um, the control here uh, and here. And again, sorry guys, I don't know all of the names. I'm not a mechanic, but I do know um, the the throttling and control for the uh, carburetor and, and so that it can breathe effectively uh, are connected here. And I think the automatic um, uh, flow for the, for the uh, fuel uh, fl flow for the bowl is here. Uh, and, uh, and I know there's one screw right here that you might be able to see up against the wall. Uh, that's uh, basically a ground wire that's connected. And so really all we have to do uh, is to remove this wire, um, remove these two, uh, connections here and it should slide off and of course the fuel line uh, to be removed and then we'll be able to put it back together so I'm gonna go ahead and get started on doing that and um, see how this goes all right so. so what we're doing and what we've done is we've started taking loose this little screw here that holds on uh, the only wire that connects the carburetor of course here too, uh, the frame here, this is a, a I'm assuming is a, um, a ground wire. So I took that out and then we are able to at least start to um, disconnect 
uh, the little power cable here and I'm assuming that we can just pull it out here um, it's got a little hinge here that it, it slips over and you don't want to bend it too much and I'm trying to be careful here but I know you probably can't see it too well but all right it just disconnects and slides right off you guys see that all right and that's that's attached to the carburetor now we still have to get these two one's a spring and the other is the actual control lever so I'm going to try to slide this thing off and see if we can um, tilt it down a little bit usually that helps when you're taking these off but I don't want to bend it too much but let's see here so the first one I believe so the spring comes off pretty easily slides right out of this connect out of the hole right here this is a, a locking pin that probably once you spin it around you can get it to come out let me see here give me one second guys it should just come right up all right it slips right down you spin it around to you a little bit and it goes right on top of this of this um, little plastic piece here that goes on top of the carburetor it spins it around slides in and then it locks kind of in place like that you have the spring right next to it you don't want to lose that you don't want that to come loose because that's really your control for that carburetor um, and just I just let it sit really right here so that I don't lose it and get it um, uh, in the way of anything else but I have to remember to move it when I'm sliding the carburetor back in of course uh, also remember the carburetor comes with the different gaskets so I see the gasket here I see a gasket in the back um, I'm just looking around to make sure that I'm not missing anything else as I said before guys I'm not a professional at this but uh, I did want to just you know walk you through what I'm learning as I go through and, and figuring out as uh, uh, I change this carburetor out it's not a scary thing it's just um, got to be willing to try so so I think I'm gonna have to I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get this one out before I take it off but I believe I should be able to first of all let me remove this fuel line here as well and I'm just going to squeeze the clamp there and should be able to kind of work the fuel line back and forth a little bit and to be able to get it out off of the carburetor with my pliers here slowly but surely it's coming okay all right that's off gives me a little bit more room to play with here all right get that up and out of the way kind of right there okay so nothing else is connected except for and let's see I may have to actually take it off before I'm going to pull the cover off because it's not allowing me much movement there so let's see Usually I have to lean those back to get them off. So let's see what we got here. Tilt it that way. Nope. All right, let's give it a try to pull. Okay, well then, let's just do it this way. Come here. Get a little play here. room to work with guys all right let me work with it and then I'll come right back to you one all right guys we're back what I ended up having to do was to maneuver the carburetor just enough to be able to take the uh, the the connector out the wire out here from the back um, of the governor control on the on the carburetor I believe that's what that is and that allowed me to slide the total carburetor off and then of course um, you can just lift the uh, pin out and of course it just slides back in and it just, just wasn't quite enough play for me to get it out of there uh, that way. But of course, as you can see here, once you put it back in, I would just put this piece back in first before I put the new carburetor back on. And then I'll connect it here. And I should have plenty of room um, to get the carburetor back on um, as we're replacing it and, and putting it, installing the new carburetor. So we'll see. All right. We're going to get the new carburetor and all the pieces parts out. And I'll probably change out the fuel line, the fuel filter while I'm here, just to make sure that everything is new. All right. So I'm going to leave this piece here so that I know exactly where it is. Because if you're anything like me, things, te things tend to get lost. 
and not being a professional, uh, I don't want to take any chances. So that's how easy it is to pull the carburetor off. As you saw, it had a gasket on the front. It had a, it has a gasket on the rear uh, of this thing here, and I will replace those, put those in, and make sure that we're all sealed up. So I'm going to get the new carburetor out and come right back. All right, guys. I got the new fuel line here, and I uh, already put the fuel filter into one side of it. The good thing about it is it comes with these clamps. They just slide right in. And so I'm just going to put this fuel filter into the other line here. I'll take my pliers and clamp it down. As you guys can see, pretty easy. Even I can do it, right? So just making sure that the clamps are on good so that it holds that fuel filter in place. All right looks good so now I think the only thing left is to make sure we have the gaskets on the carburetor and make sure everything is reconnected and then we'll start the process of uh, tying everything back down so all right let me get the carburetor ready to go and then I'll be right back with you one all right guys um, what you see is we finally got um, the springs and the cables connected here for the governor and the uh, airflow control for the carburetor uh, they were not easy. I will admit that. I actually had to uh, bend this a little bit and just to be able to get it in the back side over here. And um, so I'm a little concerned that it may not, you know, work just as it's supposed to because it really needs to be pretty exact. And again, not being a mechanic, I'm not sure if that's a major problem or not. Maybe you guys can tell me. But um, so we got it in. I'm sliding the gasket in place here uh, in the front. The rear gasket is, uh, is already there. And I just connected the ground back to the uh, chassis of the of the motor here. And now all I'm going to do is to uh, connect the electric uh, the, the the line here for the for the power, uh, and just slide that right in until it snaps, which I think is fine there. And then we'll put the uh, fuel line back on. Okay. And as you can see, we have a brand new fuel line uh, as well. And I think it's long enough to, to get us right to where we need to be. And so we'll slide that in as far as we can get it without screwing anything else up. <laughs> and we'll use our pliers here. Let's kind of get this thing here going. I want it as flush as I can get it. Just make sure I can get as tight a seal that fuel line as I possibly can. So I'm just inch by inch, right? And then I'll take this clamp and I'll squeeze it to get it up there, just to give it, you know, that extra oomph to make sure that it's in place. Okay. All right. So we'll make sure that our gasket is there and in place. Um, check everything. Everything's in place. Uh, as far as I can tell, again, I'm not a professional. I'm a do-it-yourselfer and not that great at it. In some cases <laughs> so at this point let's see so now we'll put our breather back on slide it right onto the front of the carburetor here and then we'll take our two screws here and we'll just start putting them back together simple as that again I am going through the motions of making sure that I've done reverse everything that I, I did to, to take it off. I'm just reversing it and putting it back in and try not, I always try not to over tighten screws too, too much, especially when there's plastic involved, but you want it snug. The, 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 the motor, the lawnmower will josh around a little bit, bounce around pretty good. But again, as long as it's in place pretty tight um, and the carburetor is situated and nothing is moving, I think we're pretty good to go. All right, so we're just gonna put the covers back on this puppy, put some fuel in it, and see how she works, all right? All right, guys, we got it put back together. We're gonna see if she runs, all right? Don't judge me. Here we go. Uh-oh, didn't sound good.
have it. We replaced the carburetor and she fired right up. She's been sitting for about three, four months. So I really was pretty sure that's what the deal was. Now, as you see, $25 later, changed out the uh, carburetor. And I'll put a link in, uh, in the description below uh, so that you can go and, and find that, that uh, where I bought this from. But um, definitely worth the money. I have a great guy that works on my carburetors that can really help me out, but he would have charged me more than 25 bucks. And so for less than 30 minutes worth of work, putting it on, fires right up, I can't be mad at that. So I hope this helps somebody. If so, give me a like you know, uh, down below and let me know or send a comment. I don't do a lot on YouTube, but when I do, I try to do stuff that might help somebody. So if you got any questions, let me know. As I said, I'm not a professional, but I'll try to answer what I can. Other than that, we'll talk at you later.